Good morning, friends. I hope everyone is well on this Sunday, on this rotation Sunday, the fifth Sunday after Easter. I'm delighted to be with you today through Facebook Live. My name is Father Barry Cole. I am the rector, and we are here to worship in the service for morning prayer. And I will also proclaim the word, especially for those of you who have not yet turned in or tuned in before. I certainly welcome you. And to all my beloved parishioners out there, I miss you very dearly, and I look forward to the time when we can gather together, uh, together again publicly in worship. But let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our service begins on page 3 of the Book of Common Prayer. You will find that link on this Facebook feed just above that. But I have the old full order of service listed there as well, if you would care to follow along with that as well. So let us worship the Lord.
declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoned them and absolved of all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe this holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, page 7. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Strength set past the mountains, and is girded about with power, 
Today on Law of Us is found on page 10, and we will chant that. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth that worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim, and seraphim, continually do cry. 
vine de bani de ceară, după presenție. And it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he crossed one of his disciples, saying to them, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When he prayed, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. We also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, let me eat three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before me. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give them. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give them, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give them as many as And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Here in the second answer. Thanks be to God. <laughs> cattle, 
and other forms of livestock, and it also takes fisheries to provide fish, and that's nothing that comes to the store by accident. It reminds me of, of a funny story. Uh, it was kind of funny in a sad way, but a, a grocery manager told me about someone who complained because they were out of some leafy vegetable that, that, that she really wanted, and, and, and the lady got really upset with him and said, well, when, when are you going to get this in so I can come back and purchase some? And he said, ma'am, this isn't like manufacturing. We have to rely on a farmer to actually plant the seed and to water it and to grow it and to harvest it in due time. So this is exactly what we were, what we were praying for is the Lord's gracious provision. So I'm going to read a couple of prayers. Let's go ahead and begin with the uh, vocation day prayer for the harvest of the waters. We, we certainly do give thanks for the rain the other day. And I did realize that that loud uh, clap of thunder meant that a lightning uh, struck our oak tree, knocked over and, and tore down our, our fence. And that's another issue we're going to take care of. So we give thanks for the rain, and we give thanks uh, to the Lord for protecting us from even more harm or damage. So let, let us pray for the harvest uh, for agriculture for starters. Almighty God, who has created the earth for man and man for thy glory, mercifully hear the supplication of thy people. And be mindful of thy covenant, that the earth may yield her increase, and the good seed of thy word may bring forth abundantly to the glory of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for the harvest of the waters, O Almighty God, who made us the seed, and gave us all that moveth therein for the use of man, bestow thy blessing, we beseech thee, on the harvest of the waters, that it may be abundant in its season. Protect from every peril of the deep all fishermen and mariners, and grant that they may with thankful hearts acknowledge thee, who art Lord of the sea and of the dry land, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for our industries, O Almighty Father, who through thy Son Jesus Christ has consecrated labor to the blessing of mankind, prosper, we pray thee, the industries of this land, especially in our own community of San Antonio and Texas and the nation and even the rest of the world. Defend those who are engaged therein from all perils and grant that they may rejoice in the fruits of thy bounty and bless thee for thy loving kindness through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And next year, or next time on Congregation Sunday, uh, we'll, we'll look at maybe doing feeding in the mountains, and I'm going to post a little bit more content about that on our Facebook page. So with that, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.
goods therein, which his singular goodness, well and diligently remembered on our part, should move us as duty is again with hearty affection to love him and with word and deed to praise him and serve him all the days of our life. And that's again out of the second book of homilies appointed to be read in churches. And that's also said in our, in our articles to do so as well. So we did that. And uh, you'll find uh, more and more information if you simply Google it. But let's also remember another scriptural principle that comes from St. James' epistle. He said that every good or every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In other words, our God is not the one who changes. We are. Because quite often, we are the ones who are most predisposed to being fickle, especially when it comes to our trust in the Lord. And I think if nothing else, these times of pandemic and isolation and shortages and with all the hassles of going out and out to including, oh, I forgot to go get my mask, so I'll go back home and get the mask. And that way I can go to the store and get, get the cucumber that I, I need to get shit for the salad. Okay, so certain things that we just simply take for granted, nevertheless, I go to the store and voila, it's there. So we must remember it's God's graciousness, His mercy, and His goodness in providing for us, even during these times when things are kind of sketchy when it comes to supply. Let's begin with our psalms. We had a couple of psalms this morning, Psalm 65 and Psalm 67. The, the first psalm that we read is a, it's entitled, the Praise the God of Our Salvation. In other words, we were, what we were doing as we were reciting this psalm is we were giving thanks for a fruitful harvest. And let me read, read verses 9 through 13, uh, where the psalmist wrote, You visit the earth and water it, you greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You watered its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. So especially when you see the wagon tracks overflowing with abundance, and that, that reminds us of our trucks that are actually hauling not only produce, other general grocery items, and even livestock. And whenever you're going up the country, you can just see the cattle and the sheep on the hills, you see a chicken crossing the road or whatever, all that is from God out of his bounty and under his goodness. So we give thanks for his abundance. That's what we do. Food prices and availability fluctuate under these circumstances, but we can give thanks because it is the Lord who provides every now and then, especially these days. So how many of us have, have taken just going to the grocery store for granted? Well, hopefully not anymore. And hopefully, if nothing else, once we get back to some semblance of normalcy, that we will remember and give thanks for the Lord's provision in the very simplest thing, whether it's a pack of toilet paper, carton of eggs, carton of milk, chocolate milk especially, and the meats and all the other items that are limited. Let's just give thanks. It's the Lord who provides. Psalm 67 takes a slightly different direction. Let's go ahead and turn to that. And this begins, so we actually have a title, at least in my study Bible, that this is entitled, Make Your Face Shine Upon Us. And we can see how the psalm began. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Say lot. And definitely a pause there for reflection. And that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because note here a very familiar tone, very familiar words. Note the, the benediction that you heard that reminds us of how God commanded Aaron to bless his people. And what we would call the Aaronic blessing. This is the same thing I do for the children who come to the rail for communion, who are not yet ready to receive communion, why would I give them a blessing? That is, is the same blessing uh, that, that, I, that I 
a silver coronet to make your face shine upon us. And uh, this is more of a supplication when you read the words of this psalm. You know, whereas on the other hand, Psalm 65 was a prayer for blessing on the man, and it's also a fair witness of the Lord's saving power. And we see that in, in the 67th Psalm, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy sake felt among all nations. Does that sound familiar to you? You're going to hear that again when we pray, just a little bit, uh, in a prayer for all conditions of men, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy sake felt among all nations. So as you can see when we're going through the liturgy, you're seeing a lot of scripture that's rearranged in prayer. For some of you who are tuning in and don't know much about liturgical practice or Anglicanism or anything like that, keep in mind that our liturgy is simply scripture or scriptural principles that are arranged in such a way that we may pray for them. And that also includes the canticles and the psalms, as well as the scripture lessons that we heard this morning. Because we need to be reminded of this very simple fact. That during this time of uncertainty, we are reminded to give thanks for God's provision and to seek His blessing for continued provision. As we read in St. James just a little bit ago, the Father of all lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. We can depend upon the Lord for this. So imagine if our Lord was just <laughs> capricious. Uh, but, but he's not. He's a covenant-keeping God. And we see his covenant throughout all the pages of the Old Testament where we see Christ in those very same pages because all of this was fulfilled in the life that Christ lived, in his death, burial, and resurrection, as well as, as his ascension to heaven. And when he promised to give his Holy Spirit at Pentecost, which is coming up at the end of this month, okay, during that time, absolutely depend on the very same Lord who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Isn't that a beautiful thing? And then that takes us down to our first lesson out of Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning in verse 25. And what we read in that passage as we were hearing the words being read, we read about a covenant of peace with the restoration of God's people to their land. And keeping in mind that they were in exile, a people that were dispersed because of their covenantal unfaithfulness. And then because they, they did not obey the Lord, uh, ultimately it came to a point when they continued in their disobedience and their recalcitrance, and they, they even forgot the Lord's promises. Well, ultimately that, that led to the destruction of, of Israel as well as Judah, and then they were sent into exile. So th these are words of hope from, uh, from the prophet about a people who were to return back to their land. So this is a restoration of, of these people uh, from the land which enslaved them, and even the predators that devoured them, both two-footed and four-footed. And note how the Lord graciously cares for his people in safety and provides for their sustenance with the fruit of the land. And we absolutely see that uh, in fact, I'm going to read just a few verses here. Uh, we're going to pick it up in, in verse 11, or rather, no, let me see what I have. Yeah, I'm going to just go to verse 25, where the Lord said, I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild beasts from the land, so that they may dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them in the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will send down the showers of their season, and they shall be showers of blessing. Because, because that is absolutely the opposite of what they experienced, which was ultimately the curse because of their covenantal unfaithfulness that led them into exile. So the promise for, for God, and this all comes out of that everlasting covenant, going all the way back to Abraham, the promise of both land and descendants. So the promise of returning the people of God back to their land, and of course the promise of descendants that extend to us, his people, in the new covenant, all of which fulfilled in Christ and nailed to the cross. Then we read on in verse 27, that the trees of the field shall, shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield its increase, and they shall be secure in the land. They shall be sent. They shall be secure. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke, Deliver them from the land of those who enslaved them. They shall know that I am the Lord. In fact, 
that we need to remember this during this time. So now, now, COVID-19, it happened. Okay, and, and all of the disease that we're experiencing, the famine throughout the world, and even some of the bad stuff that we see elsewhere in our society, these are simply remnants of the fall. But we have look, to look forward to one day is a restoration of a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, where there will not be disease or famine or heartache or, or anything like that. So we can give thanks for those times of relative safety. And, and provision, knowing that all of this is from the Lord. Who didn't cause COVID-19? Again, part of the fall. And some people might ask, well, why would he allow that? Well, that's just a very deep question to be for this particular homily. And if you want to know the honest truth, if you ever have any question about why God would do anything, the safest answer always is for his own glory. Okay, so if you could just put a period at the end of that, and move on and try not to overthink things, but to give thanks for where you are now. If you are alive and listening to this broadcast, you're blessed. And as we all are, yes, we're all struggling each in our own way, but never forget that the Lord will see us through. And they shall no more be afraid of the nations, nor shall the beasts of the land of Ireland. They shall dwell securely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will provide for them renowned plantations so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land and no longer suffer the reproach of the nations. And we think of uh, olive groves, we think of vineyards and, uh, that will actually come back to life and this is all the fruit of agriculture and the sheep and the goats. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God with them and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, declares the Lord, and you are my sheep. And he specified, human sheep of my pasture, I am your God, declares the Lord. Again, a covenantal declaration. And, and we are all like sheep who have gone astray, each to his own way, but the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. For that we can rejoice in his mercy and in his grace. And ultimately, his blessing gave hope to a people led astray by false shepherds into exile and despair. We follow the true shepherd. We are the human sheep of his pasture. He loves us and likes us. And while this prophecy was specifically for those who would return to their land, the underlying principle underscores the idea that the renewal of life amongst God's people, empowered by the Holy Spirit, extends also to the natural world. May we experience renewal of life in our parish and in all churches and claim and everyone is going to be opening up again for public worship at different times. So be very much in prayer for all the churches. And I pray that they will be filled with people who watch all the virtual broadcasts. They will want to know the same Jesus that you and I know. And I'm going to talk more about that toward the end. Let's go to our gospel passage here. Luke chapter 11, 1 through 13. And you're going to see elements of the Lord's Prayer here. The Our Father. Give us each day our daily bread, which reminds us that God provides for us day by day. And like I mentioned before, you know, I will never forget for the rest of my life how certain items just were not available to us. I mean, I talked about that already. The toilet paper, milk, eggs, chocolate milk, especially, much to the chagrin of my sons who just love that. Even now, we have certain limits so that some do not do without. And that's the reason why I sell grocers such, such as H-E-B uh, put limits so that we don't have some who will, who will take too much, you know, out, out of fear. Right? I try not to think, you know, just nearly out of grief, but sometimes out of fear, I don't know if I don't get enough when I run out. Well, we have wise grocers like, like H-E-B food stores. Don't mean for this to be an advertisement. I'm sure the H-E-B owners would love it, uh, but that they will measure the distribution of these items so that everybody has some. So I hope by now we all give thanks for and seek for its provision for these very simple things that we've taken for granted for so long. And Jesus gave us also examples for how we care for our neighbors and even our children. And what was the point that he was making? He made the point that us sinners, the miserable offenders that we are, even have the capacity to provide that which is needed and requested 
whether it's by our neighbors and friends or even by our own children. So how much more will our Heavenly Father meet our physical and spiritual needs as we read in St. Luke chapter 11, verse 13? Let me, let me read that. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So it's not just merely the, the physical provisions, the sustenance that we need, but even deeper, the spiritual needs that each and every one of us have. Why? Because we are all sinners desperately in need of mercy and grace, whether we realize that or not, because that is what the Scriptures proclaim. While we always give thanks to the Lord's gracious provision for our physical needs, we give thanks even more that He has empowered us with the Holy Spirit to anoint us with power to carry out the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I command you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. We see that in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter what denomination you are, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, and in our case, ultimately, it's not what our brand name is, but do we truly know the Lord Jesus Christ? And do we worship Him in spirit and in truth? Now, I'd like to think that we have the best expression of that. That's just not my opinion. I'm sure the Lord will strike that out later in eternity when some of us might be surprised to see my number up there. But anyway. All right. So, well, we always give thanks to the Lord's gracious provision for our physical needs. Again, be thankful that He's empowered us to carry out the great commission. Because that same Holy Spirit guides us in the way of truth and righteousness to the glory of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's give thanks for His provision. Pray that we would continue to show favor, uh, especially in every industry, and certainly for those who are out of work, let's definitely pray for our friends and loved ones we know of who aren't working this time, who weren't just simply assigned to telework, uh, but who actually had to do without work uh, because their business is no longer in payment. And uh, we need to pray for them. If you are able to maintain work right now, don't forget to give, uh, to give thanks for that. But, but the main thing I really want to impart, and I'm right now, uh, let me again reiterate the fact that uh, to my beloved family here at the St. Benedict, we are a family in Sacramento community. I mean, the dear parishioners who typically would fill these pews on any given Sunday morning, I miss you. I look forward to seeing you again. And I think it's going to be wonderful when we come together, together to worship. Again, more details on that that will we'll follow. But uh, I'm going to talk to you, though, uh, also to our friends uh, who, who know me who tune in. Especially if you live in the local area, I'd like to see you, too. So if you've been visiting us through Facebook, don't forget to visit us here in person once we reopen again. And for those of you who are tuned in, whether uh, you know me, you tuned in, you live in the local area, or you're just tuning in for the first time, keep in mind that ultimately this is all about the Lord Jesus Christ, because the same thing, the one thing that we have to remember is that we're sinners. Okay, what, that, what does that mean? Is that every thought, word, action, or attitude that we have falls short of God's perfect standard for holiness and righteousness. So that means that there is no one who's righteous in his or her self. It, it's just not possible. Only one person who lived that life, the Lord Jesus Christ, who's both God and man, that's another lesson. We'll get deeper into Christology another time, part of discipleship when we show up. He alone was the one who could actually be tempted in every way, just like us, except he did not sin like we did. So, so, so here's the thing, is that uh, ultimately we deserved the punishment that was placed upon him on the cross. Okay, when he hung on the cross, his very last words were, it is finished. And then he hung his head and gave up his spirit, and he died. Okay, and he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. But that is the fact of the resurrection that cannot be refuted. So, so the thing is, when he uttered those words, it is finished, that is from the Greek, 
And what that was was a commercial term, which meant that that debt that you owe me has been stamped, paid in full. So the very blood that, that was shed from our Lord, from, from, from his hands, his feet, and from his side, and from, the, uh, and from his brow, where the crown of thorns was platted on his head, that same blood is stamped on our soul, saying it is finished. The debt has been paid in full. And it's simply this. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe who he said that he is, the eternal Son of God, who lived the life that we could not live, died on the cross and, uh, to forgive us from our sins, and simply turn to him in repentance and faith. And what does it mean to, to repent? It means to agree with what God said about the matter. You know, that, that's simply what the Greek means, to agree, but not just simply head knowledge agree, but heart knowledge and by faith to turn to him and to forsake your own ways of trying to figure things out, trying to reach up into heaven or whatever, and simply follow the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. And faith ultimately is the key to heaven. Amen? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And our service continues. Continues with the Jubilant today on our page 15. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your ways into his gates with thanksgiving. And to his force with praise, be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning. Is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Page 15, let us chant together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Page 16. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit, let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O God, be clean our hearts with Surely trusting in thy defense, 
may not fear the power of any adversaries through the mind of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has sacred brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all thy doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee into thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Foster the means made use for their cure. And grant them, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 18. O Lord our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to all in authority wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, for whom come a very good and perfect gift. Send down the congregations and other clergy, and upon the congregations committed to their charge, the help of the Spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this the Lord the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving help unto all nations. More especially we pray for thy holy church universal that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of spirit and the bond of peace and the righteousness of life. Finally, we commend thy following witness, all those who in the ways afflicted or distressed, in mind, body, or state. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience in their sufferings and a happy issue of all their afflictions. In this we beg for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Let's say together the general may say, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we need thy unworthy servants. We give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we beseech thee, give us that new sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfaithfully thankful, and that we shall afford thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom we be in the Holy Ghost, we all honor our glory, world without end. Amen. Page 20. Almighty God, who has given us grace in this time of eternal glory, to make our common supplications into thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. 
11, thank you for tuning in today, and until next time, we look forward to seeing you again. And now, receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen.